Okay, now we're going to do blood. I hope the noise in the background isn't distracting to you. Um, so blood, blood is really the beginning of the cardiovascular system, but it also ties into our discussion of um, the immune system, which is coming up very quickly. Okay. So blood is indeed thicker than water. That's the saying, right? Um, but the right way for us to say that is blood is more viscous than water, more viscous. And the temperature of blood is actually um, warmer than uh, your body temperature in general. Um, and one of the jobs that your blood does um, is carry heat from one part of the body to another. So when you are exercising really hard and generating a lot of body heat, uh, your blood is transporting that heat to the surface of the skin uh, where it can radiate off and keep you from overheating. I want you to memorize this number. This is going to be on the next exam, 7.35 to 7.45. This is particularly important for those of you going into nursing or uh, PA school. Um, blood is slightly more alkaline than uh, a pH of 7. Uh, and that might surprise you. If right now, I instantly took your blood and made it at a pH of seven. Uh, well, you would not feel good and you would die quite horribly um, in the next day or so. So um, we need our blood to be at this very narrow pH, 7.35 to 7.45. And we'll be talking about the three main systems, three main systems that allow your blood to stay in this normal level. Um, when we say that a patient has a certain problem called acidosis, acidosis, by the word acid, you would think, oh, that means something is acid. Mm, not exactly. Uh, patients have acidosis when the pH of their blood falls below 7.35. So if someone has a blood pH of 7.25, is their blood acid? No, their blood's not acid. Do they have an acidosis? Yes, they do. Why? Because their blood is more acidic than it should be. So that's an important thing to remember. There is a lot of blood in people. There's about a gallon of blood, and uh, that is a huge amount of blood. Uh, someday, if you're ever a part of an emergency situation um, where people are losing a lot of blood, um, you will appreciate just how much blood that is. So what jobs does blood do? Well, the number one job of blood is to be part of this transportation system, the cardiovascular system. So the cardiovascular system, uh, the heart is going to be the energy that powers the transportation system. Arteries and veins, they're going to be the highways of the transportation system. Capillaries, they're going to be the small streets and back alleys of the transportation system. And blood is going to be all of the trucks and cars that are carrying uh, things from one part of the body to another. What kind of things does the blood transport? Well, usually when we think of blood, we think of the way blood transports oxygen. Um, we'll be talking about that in more detail. Um, what is the next thing that we think of? when we are talking about transportation. The blood is transporting any waste products that are made, like carbon dioxide, transports those waste products from one part of the body to another. And it also transports nutrients. Anything that was in the food that you ate today is being transported from your digestive tract to all of the cells of your body by going through the blood. And of course, we remember the endocrine system. By definition, these communication molecules called hormones gets transported in the blood. The blood also is important for regulating the pH. And here we have the first way that the pH of the body is being regulated. Um, and in this case, by um, molecules known as buffers that are found in the blood. When we get to the respiratory system, we will talk about that buffering system in more detail. And I already told you about body temperature. Your blood is regulating your body temperature. 
Uh, and then we'll talk just a little bit about protection. It's important from the point of view of your body that you don't lose too much blood. So preventing blood loss is one function of the blood. And many of the cells of your immune system spend a lot of time being transported through, through the bloodstream. So all of those are functions. So what are the components of blood? The components of blood are mostly the fluid part of the blood and the cellular part of the blood. And back when I was in school, it was called uh, the, the fluid part and the cellular part. Now some textbooks don't like to use the term cellular um, because just as a detail, platelets, these things that are in our blood, technically they're not cells, they're fragments of cells. But there really is like the solid part made up of red blood cells, white blood cells, and blood platelets. Um, and then there's the fluid part, which is plasma. And part of our understanding comes back to a really old test we had where we would take a sample of blood and centrifuge it. Centrifuging it means to put blood into a machine that spins around super, super fast, that all the solid parts, all of the cells and the fragments of cells go to the bottom of the test tube, and then the liquid part would be at the top. Uh, when we do that, um, we divide up the blood almost 50-50. Down here at sea level, every drop of your blood is made up about half out of cells and cell fragments, and a, a little more than half out of the watery part of the blood. And the watery part of your blood is called plasma, okay? It's called plasma. There's a difference between plasma and serum, and I hope we will get to that. This is just another way of looking at that same information. The cellular elements, technically these things, platelets, technically not cells, which is why some textbooks use the expression formed elements rather than uh, cellular, um, but the red blood cells are about 99% of the cells that are found in that formed element fraction. Um, there are some white blood cells, but the white blood cells, that's not where they do their work. The white blood cells just jump into the blood, travel around, jump out of the blood, do their job, um, whereas the uh, red blood cells they will live and do their work and have their entire lifespan always inside of what we call blood. Over here we see plasma. Uh, plasma, the watery part of the blood, it's almost all water, 90% water. There are a lot of proteins in the plasma as well though, and you're gonna need to know those for the next exam. But also anything that's being transported in there, oxygen, carbon dioxide, Carbon dioxide is mostly in the plasma. Oxygen actually is most inside of the red blood cells. So we'll keep that in mind. So plasma, I want you to know the major proteins that are found in plasma. Do I have all of them listed here? Yeah, I guess I do. Okay, so plasma, that's the liquid part of the blood. And the liquid part of the blood um, has got lots of stuff dissolved in it, um, including lots and lots of proteins. The proteins that are dissolved into the water to make this stuff that we call plasma, uh, those are called plasma proteins, right? Now, the most abundant of the plasma proteins is this one, albumin. Albumin is the most abundant of the plasma proteins. And I want you to know the job that it performs. Its particularly important job is osmolarity, osmolarity. So the watery part of the blood needs to be isotonic to everything that's inside of cells. And it needs to be isotonic in a way that only albumin can provide, okay? Albumin is an enormous protein. Because it is so enormous, it is required to stay in the compartment that we call the vascular compartment. 
You know, there are other things that add to the osmolality of the blood, other things that make the blood isotonic to what's going on in the cells. And those things are cells like, are, are, are molecules like sodium and glucose. But those things like sodium and glucose, even though they have this osmo, osmotic quality, they're super small. So they can leave that, that, that tube system, uh, the blood vessels. Albumin is too large to leave that tube system, the blood vessels. And so it's really critical for osmolality. We will keep talking about that as we go on. Then we have got these things called globulins. The most important globulin I want you to know are these things antibodies. Uh, this list implies that globulins and antibodies are the same things. They're not. Um, all antibodies are a type of globulin but not all globulins are antibodies. So I apologize for that misleading way I have of phrasing those. But antibodies are the ones we're going to be thinking about the most, and we will talk about how they are made when we get to uh, the immune system, which is soon. I also want you to know this guy, fibrinogen, and I wanna talk just for a moment about fibrinogen. Fibrinogen is super important because it is the protein that while your blood is liquid, it is just dissolved in the watery part of the blood. But if you need there to be a blood clot to form, this protein, fibrinogen, will get cut. And when it gets cut, it will get turned into fibrin. And when it gets turned into fibrin, because this part got cut off, and then it gets turned into fibrin, this protein fibrin is shorter but this protein fibrin, it attaches to all of its other fibrin friends, and it actually forms this network of protein that creates the structure of a blood clot. So if your blood is low in fibrinogen, then you will not be able to form blood clots very well. And when you have a blood clot, that blood clot is mostly made out of this protein, fibrin. Right? I want you to actually know this, oops, I want you to know this also for um, the next exam. For the next exam, I want you to know, there we go. I want you to know that most plasma proteins are made by the liver. They are, the liver makes most of your plasma proteins, okay? Not the antibodies, we will talk about how they get made, but albumin, fibrinogen, these are things that are made by the liver. Why is that important? If you have a patient that has an inflammation of the liver or damage to the liver caused by some kind of a poison, the liver may not be able to make these proteins. And if the liver cannot make albumin, then your blood will no longer be isotonic, it will become hypotonic that will be deadly. If your liver cannot make fibrinogen, then your blood cannot clot, and that will be deadly. So make sure you understand that plasma proteins are formed by liver. And then we have got solutes, yeah, things that are being transported, those are in there. All right, I think we are going to stop there and stop.